there. Ladies and gentlemen, I saw you all watching the ferry coming from Diwar and these two young men who are trying to catch a fish. Diwar is an amazing island and today, this episode, I'm going to take you and a group of young Goans who are going to be the ambassadors of Goa as guides and they are going to take the history and heritage of Goa to the people of the world. I am sure that you are going to love what is there on that island. Entirely covered by mangroves. Let's not waste time and go over to the island of Diwar or Diwadi or Dwipawatika. Let's not waste time. Join me in the ferry and let's cross over. in Old Goa all set to go from here to Diwar Island. They are going to take over Diwar Island. Now, this particular group that I am going to take across has been under training from a department called as Jipard. And we have with us Mrs. Sarita Patil who is the core faculty and who is the live wire behind this particular group. Let us find out from her what this Jipard is, what they are planning to do and what this group is expected to know from the other side. So Sarita Bhai, please welcome to my program called as My Goyen. Thank you. And uh, what is this Jipard? Basically, Jipal, Goa Institute of Public Administration and Rural Development is an apex state institution for the training of administrative uh, uh, staff. staff as well as the elected representatives. Okay. So we conduct a lot of training to the uh, officials as well as uh, elected representative from Panchayat Raj. Okay, and this uh, information what you, what you impart to them, uh, that is based on what the heritage or is it a cross section of? Uh, this training of tourist guide, which has been uh, as per the request of Department of uh, Tourism, okay. we are conducting this two months training for the tourist guide so that they can provide after uh, this training, there will be an exam of these guides and once they cl clear this exam, they will be issuing them a okay. license. license. Okay. okay, so they are, these tourist guides is a full professional uh, to this guide, so that uh, it they are the they will be the human resource for the tourist department. And these people, how many of them are they? Around 50. Now today we have uh, we are we have this big group over here with young people, elderly people, yes. and all young at heart, basically. Very. And we are going to go into Diwar. What do you expect them to learn from Diwar? especially the history, how Portuguese had conquered Diwar. When we know that uh, it was conquered, we, had, we, we are planning to go uh, to Diwar as we are going to conquer it. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mrs. Sarita Patel. Like I told you, the live wire behind this group. And like she says, we are going to conquer Diwar. Follow suit. You to conquer it because their aim is to pass heritage first hand to a big group who is going to take it to all over the world. So let us say thanks to Sarita Bhai. Thank you Thank so you. much.
the actual tour should start of Diwar from around here. Now I will tell you the reason why it is. Understand one thing that uh, the people who are coming to Goa are not used to the things that we are used to. And that is exactly what they want to see. We have to give them our food. Same way what is very insignificant for you is amazingly significant for those people. And why am I saying this over here? The reason is that this was an island. There were no ferries earlier. What was there? Canoes. Right? So people used to cross over by canoes and they would have this big load. At the end of this road is the ferry of Ribandar to Diwar. Okay? So what they would do? They would get down there and the distance from here to there is about 700 meters. And what you see over here on the side is the Diwar village. Now you see a person who is coming to sell vegetables, fish, whatever. He is walking from there with a big pate on his head and he is going to Diwar. What does he do? He requires a little rest. Now, today we have got a habit of cutting down the trees next to the highways. But earlier they planted trees because people needed shade when they were traveling. Whether they were going walking, whether they were going to a block cart, whether they were going by a cart, they needed shade. And they constructed this type of structures called as paired. But that basket that was there on their head, now they would keep it here, but initially they kept it on a place called as a Dorne. Now this Dorne is very very important. Doro, to keep, to door means Dorne. Now there are two things that you must notice over here. Here under this tree you can see that masonry structure. Uh, if you see that it is about this high, so a person could come and push his pate over there. On the hills, you get three big stones, which are called a dolmen. And then when the pate came, they would just slide between the two stones, get down and rest the pate on top. What does it tell you? That when there is a pate on your head, but it's very heavy, you can't keep it down, you can't keep it on your head. You require the help of somebody else. So you would find that this type of door is on roots that were frequented by people where they could ask the help. And you will find those other doornies in hills and in places where they would have to walk where there would be nobody. So they could put the pante on their own, then go underneath, lift it up and continue their journey. This is very, very important when it comes to telling the foreigners or any of the Indians who are coming. When I stand over here, you see fields right now. This possibly were all the cousin lands. But if you look behind, look behind, you see the entire St. Peter's Church here in Paneli. You can see a white structure here. And from there, you come down here. You see Our Lady of Rosary where we went last time. Behind that is the St. Augustine's Tower. And you can see only the roofs. Today the weather is bad. You can see the roofs over there. You can see uh, St. Francis of Assisi, you can see uh, Sir Cathedral. So the entire structure can be Now there is one more thing when you come here that you will notice. You will find people fishing. If you have got people, stop. Especially foreigners, stop. Show them how they fish because this type of fishing doesn't take place in countries abroad. Then secondly, they have never seen, they have never gone to a field. They have never seen people who are de the rice. Right. These are called as intangible heritage of Goa. Something that we have always been doing here and something that is predominantly done as an occupation of this land. So this is very very important because as you are going, we think that these are blanks, but these are places where you can stop and you can explain to them what our culture is and our culture is rooted to the land we are not looking at a tour where you just say blah 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 it's not that you have to break the monotony of your tour by showing them this don't leave anything out 
of this place which you can tell them as you are going from here. So here we are on the hillock which is of which was of prime importance to the Portuguese. Now when you stand over here, today you see a lot of trees that have grown over here. But when you stand here, this is one uh, church which is facing the west. Most of the structures you will find that they face the east. They had this church looking out this side because this is the mouth of river mud. So if any enemy was coming here, they could see, the, what you see on the other side is Sharao, which is separated by that water body over there. And now you can see the barns. You can see that they are controlling the water coming inside by putting mud over there and creating barns. This church is dedicated to Our Lady of Piedad, built somewhere in uh, 1630, 1634. But what is important? On the other side, you have seen the photo of Father Joseph Vaz, who has already been beatified, okay? Now here, if you see, this gentleman, who also went with him to uh, Sri Lanka, Father Jacom Gonsalves, now they have put this over here, that, uh, you know, he was an oratorian, and they have started the process of beatifying. Now, this gentleman was originally from this village, this island. And the house where he was staying, his own ancestral house, he has donated it to a school. And today, the Our Lady of Divar High School is operating from there. Now, the symmetry which is there, you can see the symmetry, it is locked. Inside, you see that structure, a small little uh, room like that. And the center of that, the ceiling, has got a lotus motif, telling us, that it is during the Kadam period. I also told you that here there was a temple of Ganesh, which today, after it was uh, destroyed, the idol is at Khandara. Uh, but <coughs> this gentleman, Mr. Higomstere, <coughs> he donated the land. And just here, next door, you can see the temple of Lord Ganesh. y'all are in the house of God and when we take our people, when we take our guests to the different house of gods in Goa, belonging to different communal faiths, first of all, one must understand what are the protocols that we have to follow. You understood? Now when I mean, what I mean by protocols is, first, some of the guests and their children have got a bad habit of eating chips and all wherever they are going. You must tell them that they cannot do that, whether it is a church or a temple. Number two, when you walk inside a church or a temple, please remove your headgears. Thirdly, you can hear me talking in a low voice. Protocol requires that we maintain decorum inside and so we expect our people who are with, uh, with us to maintain decorum. Notice one more thing, that I am speaking very slowly and on the fifth bench you can hear me. And when the father is to say the mass there, today we have got mics, earlier there were no mics, but the acoustics of this place is such that the person sitting on the last bench would be able to hear. In case the whole place was filled up, I told you when you come inside the church, the first thing you must see is what? Choir balcony on top. Is there a choir balcony here? Yep. Okay. 
Now when the dignitaries or high placed dignitaries would sit down on top over there, <coughs> you can see this superbly uh, crafted uh, pulpit. Now if you see the pulpit over here, there is no door. Now you'll find a door into the wall, that wall is so thick that it could take the staircase to go inside. So he would walk inside and you can see a door behind. But the carvings that we see over here today, the carvings that we see in this particular church, the maintenance of that costs a lot of money and the people from Diwar, they do not spare any efforts or money for that matter. And you can see how wonderfully they have maintained. Now photographs, many of the temples will require that you take permission before you take photographs and some of them will not allow you to take. This is very, very important. Please tell your people, who, whoever you are with, like in Bomb Jesus, Badrik or in Sir Cathedral, they don't, they don't stop you from taking photographs, but they stop you from taking your photographs in front of something. So you cannot take group photographs, you can't take, they will come and, and it's very insulting if they come and they suddenly stop your person. So it is your duty to inform them, even mobiles for that matter. Be very careful when you are taking this uh, thing. But when you come into churches like this, now this particular church was, you know, the churches in Goa, if you see, when the Portuguese built them, they did not build them just for the intention of religion. They built them with two purposes. If you see, most of the churches are always built on top of the hills. They help them to keep an eye on the attackers who are coming. Like here, for example, I show you, strategically placed to see the mouth of the river over there. When I tell you all certain things about religion, they are not hard and fast tools. They are beliefs, and beliefs change from people to people. Please do not try to change them. Do not try to hurt them of the other people. These are just things that you have come academically across. So what I want you to do is go around, see the place, because it's not very often that you can come and enjoy the wonderful craftsmanship, not only in wood, but also behind, if you see, in, uh, you know, in uh, mud and in clay. So ladies and gentlemen, we are in the Piedad church and in this church I have brought all these uh, young people to see the glory of craftsmanship that the Goans had. And here at the request of the father, uh, Father Gaius, he has opened this particular thing where they have maintained the silverware that was used in the church. And what you see, the Christ figures, they are all in ivory. So next time you are in Piedad, please meet Father Dias and see this. the river Mandovi, we see the Diwar Island and on top of Diwar Island, there is a massive, beautiful, majestic church that is uh, on top and that is dedicated to Our Lady of Piety or Piedad. Now when we came here, we were totally taken over by the beauty that we saw here. What we will do now is we will speak to Father Zedayas, who is the parish priest here and find out a little bit more. Come. Good morning, Father. Thank you so much for uh, allowing us to come in. Father, can you tell us um, what is the history of this or how this beautiful church came about? Uh, we have, uh, we have, this is the third church here. Okay. First, uh, in uh, 1542 up to 42, there was a very small ch church near the cemetery. Second, it was uh, since the beginning. Uh, 
that was not sufficient. At any rate, we had a second one. And the second one was temporary. And this is the third one, the last one. It is almost three centuries old. In, okay. in uh, 2024, we will complete the three centuries. Three centuries. The speciality of this church, it is, it is the work is done. It, was, uh, it has taken 24 years for the construction. 24 years? Yes. Okay. And uh, the architect of the church is a parish priest of the church. Oh. Who has built already one church in uh, Santana. In Santana, Talauli. that is of Saint Anna. Talauli. Yes, yes. in Talauli, where they have he, the Toshan Jefes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. He was there a parish priest. Okay. And this, that church is bigger than this, okay. higher than this, oh. but not as beautiful as this. Because, Definitely. Uh, because the uh, reason is very simple. He has started work over there, but he didn't have free hand over there. Okay. So he was transferred here. So he got that experience plus yes. free hand. So this is um, his masterpiece. Very good. Father, can you tell us also of Father Jacom Gonsalves? Yeah, Jacom Gonsalves is son of this soil. He's a companion of uh, you know, Father Joseph Paz. Uh, at the request of Father Joseph Paz, he left this island and went to Sri Lanka. He worked there. He was his successor. He was his companion. He was his vicar general. And companion like Peter and Paul, for example, he was Jacomi and Joseph Paz. But because what happened is we have concentrated all our attention on Father Joseph Paz. So Father Jacomi was kept in oblivion. Now we have taken up the cause of it. And now we are doing something. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, he was going there when the church was being built. Oh. He was building church in Sri Lanka and we stone church was being in Kundiwar. Okay. And the church, for example, the beauty of the church, you see, there is no steel here, no cement. Without steel, without cement. All these arches, all these things. All these are interlocking stones. Interlocking stones. Not only here, even if you are going on the top of it, top of this uh, abobata, yes. we are having roof uh, uh, five meters uh, high. Higher. You can walk over it. Okay. Over it. So it is so strong. Yeah. And the, the structure is so strong, there are stones just to balance and all this thing, okay. heavy stone. And I don't know how they have been, people are just admiring, but we don't know how it has been built. Because at that time there was no crane, no trucks, nothing of this sort. Yes. From I don't know. And this, uh, all this is uh, work of this because it has been, because no machinery is involved here. Everything is handy work, carpentry, carving and all this. Involved. Okay. So. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, can you see the passion on uh, the face of Father Dias? And all this comes because of the beauty that he sees around here. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want the same passion to come on your expression, so when you are in Goa, make it a point. Come to the Diwar Island, meet Father Dias. I think he is an exceptionally good gentleman because he accedes to all your requests, just like he has allowed us to come here and to shoot over here and to bring this beauty to all of you people who are sitting down, whether it is in Portugal, America, Australia, you're watching this, thanks to Father Dias. Thank you very much, Father, for your kind thing. Among the members of the group today, which are going to Diwar, we have a gentleman who is rooted to the heritage of Goa. His name is Mr. Ruben the Oliver Fernandez. Uh, I'm going to talk to him for a reason. Now, they have been involved very, very actively to handle those hundreds of foreigners who touch Goa in the big ocean liners who come here for a day they want to see Goa and then they would go back with lovely memories so Ruben Bab welcome to my program my going thank you Sanjeev uh, you have been there you know with the big boats that are coming the passenger ships which are coming yes. over here, the liners yes what is it that this foreigners who are coming here from all over the world what is it that they are looking for okay the foreigners that come here mostly want to see the heritage part of Goa. Okay. They want to see the true Goa, the history of Goa. In the, some of the f few places that we normally would take would be the old Goa churches first, 
we explained to them about the different um, monuments, the churches that were built by the Portuguese in the 16th century. Mainly the most important being the Se Cathedral, which is the yes. supposedly the biggest uh, church in Asia. And one of the most important is Nossa Senhora the Rosario, okay. which is very important for the Portuguese. That because Our Lady of Rosary. Our Lady of Rosary. That was built like in the form of a castle. castle. If you see, the enemy would see from a distance, he would think actually yes. that it is a castle, but it's disguised as a church. Okay. After that, they want to see uh, maybe a, a temple or two. Okay. We normally take them to Mangeshi or Shantadurga, which is especially Shantadurga is a very beautiful, very beautiful. temple. And from there, we would uh, go to a spice farm. Hmm. We show them different plantations. Yes. And then it culminates into a typical, traditional Hindu food uh, buffet, buffet lunch. Okay. Yeah. Now, I specified the word Hindu. Now, you people don't use vinegar. You yeah. people use lime. Lime. But uh, they really enjoy. Because they like this food. They love this food. You will, you will be surprised. Okay. They love this food. They like to see the, the, the food served in those earthen pots. Yes. It's something very traditional, okay. something they have never seen before. Okay. And they eat on the leaves made of the, yes. the uh, areca, made out of the areca, uh, nut. The areca nut. This is something they just go crazy about these things okay. because that is eco-friendly. This is biodegradable yes. and therefore they are very conscious about littering, about garbage and they really appreciate that we don't use plastics here, okay. it's all, and they, they even eat with their hands oh. because, so that they could really go into the, the way the locals eat. eat or, yeah. Overall, it's a very big experience and they just love it, you'll be surprised. Okay. Yeah. Today, you know, you accompanied us to Diwar Island. Yes. And we saw a lot of things. Yes. You think these foreigners who come, they would love this? Frankly speaking, Time does not permit them to do this because they have they are here for a few hours. Yeah. But if you have a dedicated group yes. who would like to see the interiors of Goa, yes. I think Diwar Island really um, will offer them everything that you need to see. Okay. Because it's such a uh, uh, an island with rich in traditions. You see the Saptakoteshwar or the old place where it was, where we then where it was taken, yes. in the beautiful churches and temples. And the Bonera festival. Yes, then Bonera is unique to the, to, yes. to the island yes. of Divar. Yes. I think it's very interesting. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you think that sitting down at home is going to get you some business, no. Please come. Ruben Bab has told us that we are unique. Our food is unique. So let's not waste time. Let us say bye to Ruben Bab and go and pounce on the food and the heritage. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks, Thank Sanjeev Bab. Thank you Thank very you. much. Yeah.